Namo tassa begoetto, araheto, some mass and put the sa, Namo tassa begoetto, araheto, some mass and put the sa, Namo tassa begoetto, araheto, some mass and put the sa. This time I'm going to say a few words about walking meditation. And the um, first point to make is that walking meditation is not really a uh, special meditation per se it's posture of meditation you can any any meditation you can do sitting pretty much you can also do walking so it's just a, a change of postures but that said there are some practices that work well with walking especially and we'll get into that Walking meditation is uh, very much part of the tradition in Thailand. Uh, walking Jongkram is um, really a basic part of a, of a monk's practice. Every kuti will have a, a walking path outside. Beaten earth often raised in a wooden frame as part of the uh, equipment. The Buddha praised walking meditation, saying that samadhi built up while walking lasts a long time. So this is because I think that it's a little bit more difficult to develop the samadhi because there's somewhat more distraction while walking. But then if you take that samadhi built up while walking and take it into the sitting posture, your sit will be that much stronger. So I often recommend that uh, a good practice is to do some walking first before sitting. And so if you're doing an extended period of meditation in a day, to start with a walk, then a, then a sit, then a walk, then a sit. And it's also very important to make the transition from walking to sitting as mindful and smooth as possible. You know, not to just suddenly stop and flop down, you know, but very mindfully change postures. Mindfulness while changing postures is something that uh, is especially powerful. Some of the Burmese uh, Vipassana teachers emphasize this point, citing the case of Ananda, who went through three stages of enlightenment between sitting and, and lying down, changing his posture. So, how to do walking meditation? Walking meditation is not going for a stroll, it's not taking a break, it's an integral part of the practice. You can do it indoors, but it's better usually to do it outdoors if the weather conditions allow. They take a, um, a stretch of, of level ground, maybe 20 or so paces, and mark that off, you know, either physically, you might want to mark it physically with something, or just mentally say, oh, well, I'll walk from this tree to that tree and walk back and forth on that on that stretch the uh, eyes should be downcast at about a 45 degree angle there's one of the texts say it's like you're you're um you've got a, a bullock or a horse pulling a plow and you're watching the plow you know so a plow length ahead so you're just having your eyes rest on the ground ahead and to the end of the walk, then turn around mindfully and walk back and just continue in this way. The hands should be folded in front or in some some practices it might be uh, possible to just let the arms swing naturally, but advise not to fold the hands behind the back. 
some of the Thai Ajans uh, stress this point. They say if you fold your hands behind your back, you're going for a, a stroll. You're not doing jankram. So that's kind of the basics. Now, as to particular methods or techniques associated with walking meditation, in the uh, Mahasi Sayada meditation tradition, the Pasana meditation, it's advised to walk very slowly and pay attention to the sensations on the sole of the feet. Walk extremely slowly, an exaggerated kind of slow walking, developing mindfulness. In uh, most other traditions, you walk at a normal pace or just slightly slower than normal. And you can continue to watch the breath if you're doing breath meditation. Uh, if you do that, it's helpful if you can, to some degree, synchronize your, your walking with your breathing. So like two steps per breath or something or whatever is natural. Some people find this easy to do. Other people find it difficult. Don't bother doing that if it makes your breath ragged and you're, you should be controlling the pace of the walking, not the pace of the breathing. But if you find that you're able to do that, it can help to continue with the, um, the mindfulness of breathing. Otherwise, you can practice a general mindfulness while walking and Pay attention either to the sensations on the soles of the feet or another method is to just be aware of the whole body moving. And this is where you might leave the arms free, let them swing, and just be aware of the whole body movement. This is a body meditation. One particular practice that um, is associated with uh, or is based on walking meditation is found in the commentary to the Satipatthana Sutta. It's a uh, walking with mindfulness of the elements, four elements, earth, air, fire, water. And you do it in this way. When you raise the, the foot, that's fire element. It's so energizing. You're lifting up your foot. Then you move it forward through space. That's the air element. Because that's the element of motion. And then you let it flow down to the ground. That's water element. Then you press your foot into the ground. That's earth element. And then you repeat it with the other foot. Fire, air, water, earth. Raising, moving, placing, and pressing. That's a very good practice for um, quieting a busy mind because you have to keep your mind engaged to keep track of where you are in the, uh, in the walking. And uh, many people who have tried this report that, that it's a very good, uh, very good way of settling the mind. You can also use walking meditation to um, fine-tune your practice and your state of mind. If you're on a retreat and you're alternating walking, sitting, walking, sitting, if you find yourself becoming too dull, like lazy and tired, you should do more walking meditation and walk more briskly. If you're on the other hand, restless, you should uh, do less walking meditation and walk more slowly and sit more. So you can use the, the walking, you can fine tune your practice with the walking. Another use of walking meditation that's uh, commonly done is for memorizing chanting or other texts. You can take your chanting book out with you and repeat the chants as you walk up and down. It seems to be pretty effective because it keeps you from being too uh, too dull. You know, you're, you're kind of more engaged. That's something commonly done. You'll see uh, Thai monks with their 
with their uh, chanting books, memorizing Padimokha or Paritas or what have you. So there's a lot of different ways of doing walking meditation, and it's a very versatile posture. You can do a lot with it, and you can, as I said, you can fine-tune your practice. You can overcome dullness by walking more, and you can uh, overcome restlessness by walking slower and walking less often. Um, so uh, before I finish, I'll, I'd like to um, say a few words about the posture in general. Just walking, as I said at the outset, is one of, one of the postures of meditation. There, there are four classic postures of meditation, sitting, walking, standing, and lying down. Sitting and walking are the two that are most, uh, most often done. Sitting posture, the important detail is keeping your back straight. If you can sit cross-legged, that's that's good because it's a stable base. But don't, uh, if you have trouble with your knees or your ankles, you know you may not be able to do that. But however you sit, it's good to keep the back straight. So if you're sitting in a chair, for example. It works best if it's a straight back chair, not like an easy chair. And uh, to keep the back straight, if you put some cushion or a rolled up towel or something behind your lower back above the hips, so that, that there's support in the lower back, but the shoulders are, are not supported. That, that's a, a good um, tip for maintaining proper posture in a chair. Standing meditation is a, a good alternate for sitting. If you're stiff from sitting or if you're you know, having difficulties in one way or another, you're maybe too sleepy or your body's getting sore, you can switch it out with standing. So you just stand with your feet uh, a little bit apart and the arms at the side and... Um, continue with your practice in that in that form lying meditation is the most difficult the only time it's really useful is when you're going to sleep when you intend to go to sleep anyway and you want to continue your practice into the sleep into the sleep states you can do that lying down but it's so difficult not to fall asleep lying that it's not really uh, recommended to do it very much Otherwise, the lion's posture is the recommended posture. It's the, you'll see it in statues of the Buddha in um, the Mahaparinibbana position, lying on the right side with the uh, head propped up with the hand, the right hand with the elbow resting on the ground or the bedding. If you do this, if you try this, you'll find it's difficult to maintain for very long it puts a lot of stress on the wrist but it can the only other use for lying meditation is as an occasional uh, short you know 10 or 15 minutes if you need to rest the body without breaking your practice so just to conclude let's say that um Walking meditation is not to be considered unimportant. It's an integral part of the practice. And it's a, it's not a break or a disruption of the practice. It's a continuation of the practice in a different posture. And uh, it can be very um, a very powerful way of developing the meditation.